right, so we're down here at a new shop here in town called Big House Guitars here in Atlanta. It's actually not new. They've been here for a while, but they just moved to this location. And I uh, wanted to come down and check it out. My friend Zapata down. He's visiting Atlanta for a few days. So I think we're gonna play some stuff. They've got a really cool 71 JMP 100 watt full stack that I really wanna play. I've got a 52 gold top. They've got a, another 50s Les Paul that looks really good. And they've got some cool stuff in here. So I think we're just gonna wander around and try and play some cool guitars and amps and see what Zapata's gonna try and buy. JMP. I'm on the uh, I'm on the hunt for a Marshall, and um, I feel like I need to play this for educational purposes, you know, to try and uh, understand more about what I might be looking for. All right, so what's the story on this JMP? So this JMP, uh, we got it about uh, six months ago. It came out of uh, uh, Flint, Michigan, um, a little city just north of Flint, Flint Michigan. Uh, the story is that the guy that uh, sold it to us, he sold it for the widow of a fellow that passed it away. We have the original 
sales receipt, it was $1,800 in 1972 for the two cabs and the head, which is actually a, a pretty good bit of money. Um, at first we thought, since the, um, the, the covers didn't match on the speakers that they were from two different buys, but they were actually on the original receipt. So I think back in the day we figured out that the Marshall dealers you know, would sometimes use two different batches, even though it has a small weave and a big weave in it. Wow. And uh, it's a full, you know, 100 watt, uh, classic rock and roll. You know, you saw these all on stage in the, the 70s and early 80s. And uh, this is the real deal and it pumps out a, a lot of power, a lot of power. It's, uh, it's here in the shop and uh, we hope we don't sell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the original, a lot of the original paperwork and everything for it. And the only modification, a lot of these were modded back in the 70s and modding these vintage Marshall heads now really affects their value. Uh, if you put a master volume and other things on it, it really drops their value in half. The only mod that this head had was somebody had put uh, like a, a, a Radio Shack fan here. Okay. And this is the original wiring and everything for, the, for one of the cabs. So the original fan they had mounted on the outside and they put a, a plug-in for it inside the head. That's the only mod to this 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 head. So original transformers, everything, yeah, all, all there. Yeah. Okay. And when you're dealing with vintage amps, uh, you always want to make sure that the transformers match the original numbers. That can greatly affect the sound. That's what really makes the sound in these things. Um, so it's it's uh, it, it'll drop the value in half changing change a transformer on a, on a vintage yeah. Marshall. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can we play it? Oh hell yeah, you can play it anytime. <laughs> So these have gotten to where the, you know, the cabs alone are 2,500 bucks. Yeah, wow. And all your listeners out there at Gearheads, they know it. if you see metal handles on a Marshall, that right away tells you that it's in the vintage range. So yeah. always look, always look for metal handles. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you see a cab, no matter how beat up it is, if it's a Marshall cab and it's got metal handles, grab it. Mm -hmm. um, because there's only so many of them and they're going up and up and up and up. <laughs> Pretty rad. Real blue. <laughs> <laughs> Got your earplugs on, Chris. Protect yourselves, kids. They uh they gave us all earplugs because it's gonna be loud. But it's not every day you get to play a hundred watt JMP full stack. So why not? So fifty six. It's a 59. 56, it's a 56 conversion, so it's got 59 PAFs, uh, wiring harness, bumblebee parts, and everything. It's, it's the best sounding last ball in the store. It's got a good weight to it as well. So. Yeah, so if you're looking for a 59 but you're on a budget, this is, <laughs> this this is, is the, the way one you to go do for. it. Yeah, this is the way to do it. <laughs>
Okay, so it's a few days later and I'm editing this video and obviously the YouTube video cannot help you understand how just unbelievably loud it was in that store. I've played a lot of amps over my years. I've played Marshalls. I've even played 100 watt amps before, but having the 100 watt head on the stack, both 412s running at full speed, I've never experienced a, a sound or a feeling like that, especially standing right in front of it. There's no attenuator, nothing to knock it down. We were running that amp at full volume. And uh, it put some things into perspective for me. First of all, when you're moving air like that, the guitar feels different. The amp feels different. Everything feels different when you're moving that much air and that much volume. Second of all, I can't imagine what it would have been like in the 60s or the 70s to have not just one of those stacks on stage with you, but two or three or four, and to be playing a gig like that, the way Jimmy did and Jimmy Page and Jimi Hendrix and Clapton when he was in Cream. I mean, these guys used to run these stacks, multiple stacks at this volume. And if you ever have the chance to experience it, standing in front of an amp like that, it'll change your perspective. The third thing I noticed was how actually somewhat difficult it was to play. I don't know if it was that particular amp or it was just the volume that I was pushing or what, but it felt like I was having to like wrestle the notes out of the guitar. It, it was like a fight. I was fighting the guitar, fighting the amp, and I played differently. I played a, with a more aggressive feel, I think, than I typically would, and that's because of the amp. Honestly, it was a little intoxicating. Um, I would love to go back there and do that again. And now I have the firsthand experience of a Marshall full stack, which um, if you ever get the chance to, I would highly recommend uh, you take it up and play it because it's, uh, it's a pretty unique experience. So huge thanks to Big House Guitars for letting us come down. We just walked into the store with cameras and no real plan and this is what came out of it. If you're in the Atlanta area, I would definitely add them to my list of stores to check out while you're in town. Huge thanks to my friend Zapata who came down and hung out with us for a few days. Uh, you can check out all his stuff in the description box down below as well as Big House Guitars. Uh, they're on Instagram and I believe TikTok. Uh, also, I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Rhett Scholl. You can also find links to my video courses and digital products and everything in the description box down below. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to finally have another guitar store tour video after almost two years of not posting one. So uh, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe, click the bell icon down below, and thank you for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl, and remember there is no plan B.